episode of Author Fan Face Off. I am the Leaping Librarian, Stacey Ratner. And my co host today is someone new, wow. a guest host, uh, Missy Smith. Yay! She is a writer for NYSIS, the New York State Union of Teachers. No, New York State United Teachers. But you may notice we have a special fabulous author because we have one great author and one great book and one super fan and our fabulous author today is my usual co-host Steve Jenkins. Give it up for Steve. Thank you. Very good to be here. (laughs) Now I know why authors always say they're nervous when they start recording these. Well, today is our challenger, Steve's challenger. We have the delightful Caleb. He is a DJ. He is a music enthusiast. He is a gu- he is a gamer. He's an activist. He's an historian. He's a cancer survivor. And he is also an eighth grader from Illinois. Here joining us today, courtesy of Mrs. White's class. So we're very happy to welcome you to author fan face off yeah and he has read bomb we think at least four or five times so steve are you ready i've definitely read it more than that <laughs> you know, in the <laughs> and revising process but that was a long time ago and I, well, aren't you like turning into a graphic novel so didn't you kind of have to go over it again uh, yeah yeah but that was i wrote the script maybe about three years ago so i, I spent a lot of time with it then and I feel like it's pretty fresh in my mind. I feel pretty confident. I know you do too. So I think it's a good matchup. All right, Caleb. What was the code name for the United States Atomic Bomb Project? The Manhattan Project. Easy. Good. Okay. You got it there right back. I know. Steve, Robert Oppenheimer was the leader of the Manhattan Project. Where was his lab located? In Los Alamos, New Mexico. Okay. You've got a competition yeah. on our hand, folks. Yeah, this is- <laughs> Steve has come to play. <laughs> okay, well, next up, Caleb. What famous scientist was recruited to alert President Roosevelt about the dangers posed by nuclear fission and the possibility of Germans developing an atomic bomb? Albert Einstein. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and I, after we wrote this question, I realized, Steve, that this, Albert Einstein is, I think this is our third question about him in all of our episodes. He comes, he comes up, up a lot. lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, I love that scene of Albert Einstein. Caleb, you know what I mean? Where, when, the, when the two yeah. scientists are driving around the beach looking for Einstein and they're getting really annoyed with each other. It's hot, they're sweaty, they're lost. To me, that's the opening of the movie. If if when we can make a movie of it, and we should talk about that after, we'll make, we'll make a movie of this story. I just think that's a great opening scene. You know, these guys driving around and they're annoyed with each other. Let's just give up, forget about it. And they end up asking a kid with a fishing rod, you, you know where Einstein lives? And he's, he says, oh, yeah, of course, right over there. And so he, he takes them. And that changed, I mean, that changes the course of history, little things like that. That's, the, that's what I look for when I'm doing research. To find a story like that is just gold. Yeah, that was a, that, that was a great opening scene. Okay, well, let's move on. Uh, a question for Steve. Okay, how much energy does an atom release when it splits? Oh, no. Like in mathematical terms? Uh, no, no, no. I, We're thinking directly from your book. Metaphorically I it, speaking more. Yeah, I mean, I describe it as enough to make an a, a grain of sand jump. To That's a, what we're looking for. Got, okay, yeah. In terms of, yeah, let's just go with that rather than getting into the math. <laughs> um, all right, Caleb, back to you. What's the name of the teenage scientist who gave secrets to the Soviets? Ted Hall. <laughs> Ted Hall. Yep. No, you're right. Quick, you're right. You, you don't, right. Don't yeah, you're not even you're not even hesitating or anything. I feel like we need to move on, Missy, to our harder questions. I don't know, I but don't know, like our backup <laughs> questions. <laughs> Although this is a hard one for Steve, so I don't know. We'll see how um uh, we'll see how he does. He may need your help, Caleb. Harry Gold carried two pairs of gloves. What did the other guy, Klaus Fuchs, carry? A tennis ball. Oh, okay. 
You guys are both incre- <laughs> impressive. Okay, um, I am up now, and I am gonna, I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna like make this a little harder for you, Kayla, because I think that you know you need a bigger challenge. So, are you ready? Mm-hmm. He's ready. Okay. Why did Jens Paulsen's team parachute into Norway? Are you talking like the exact reason why they had to parachute or like what were they doing to parachute? Why, why, like, they, were try, why they were parachuting okay. into, into Norway. This okay. is my cat. So they, they were, um, <laughs> <laughs> I know my cats keep banging on the door wanting in. <laughs> so they parachuted into Norway because they were trying to destroy the heavy water plant at Venmark and being able to parachute meant they were able to get in without um, having to like cross any guards or see anyone. Once again, another okay. great response. That's awesome. Oh. You're amazing, I'm, Kayla. Oh my god, yeah, you are. You're you're a, you're a walking encyclopedia of of bomb knowledge. <laughs> okay, Steve. Yeah. So uh, spies are told to wait only for this amount of time when meeting someone before they leave. I know what you mean. That was something Gold referred to. I think it's five minutes. You're right. Five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> and it came up at the end, too, when the woman spy was meeting up also. Oh, so it was, yeah, that yeah. was more than one time. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, this is a really hard one, Caleb. I think I'm... Um, what was happening in... I think this is really hard. What was happening at the secret lab in Oak Ridge, Tennessee? Okay. Um, Oak Ridge, Tennessee was in charge of, um, of obtaining U-235 out of uranium to process it so they could then send it down to Los Alamos. That's okay. so hard for him, Stacey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else do you got? Hard is, hard is relative. All right. We can't stop you. Steve, um, if you get this one in late December, this is something that we would totally give our own authors when you and I do this. In late December, 1944, Ted Hall sent a letter to Savile Stack in book code using lines from this poem. Caleb knows that I can tell. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just trying to think uh, about that. Yeah, I'm thinking it's um, Walt Whitman. Did I say the name of the poem? You did, Steve. You know, you know I, no. <laughs> I thought I was stump proof. No one is stump proof. No, no one. <laughs> no one is above the law here. All right, you better you better tell us. Leaves of grass. Right, okay. Well, we have the bonus. Missy, do you want to ask the bonus? Sure, I'll ask the bonus. Okay, you guys ready? Oppenheimer was called three different nicknames throughout his life. What were those three nicknames? I think in terms of childhood, maybe like college, high school age, and then as an adult. Caleb, you can start. Do you have any on the top of your head? or? Okay, I'm going to go. Um, he, was, he was called Oppie. People like to call him Oppie. That was one of that them. One. Then the second one I know was people used to call him the father of the atomic bomb. That's more in relative history terms. Yeah. And I was going to say, I guess to be more official, the, the like the director of Los Alamos. They got that's two out of three. Working. So there's a child, are we missing a childhood one? It was like, yeah. what did the bullies in school call him? Oh yeah, yeah. sweetie. Is that right? No. <laughs> It was something like that. Something just ridiculous. There was something cool like, like that. that. Do you know, Caleb? Oh, okay, I, here's it. You got it? What is it? Do you know, Caleb? I, I feel like I, I don't. Was, I feel like I was on the right track. Is it cutie? Yes, yes cutie. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I remember that. No, you, you guys like are that, amazing. Yeah. Wow. Both of you did a wonderful job. Caleb, congratulations. Oh. I think you won, don't you think? Oh, definitely. You didn't, oh, definitely? <laughs> I don't think it was that definite. <laughs> All right, give us the hardest one. Come on, what else do you want? The hardest one. Let me see. Let me see. What do I have? 
what rumor did Oppenheimer unsuccessfully try to start about what was going on at Los Alamos? Oh, he tried to say that in Los Alamos that they were building an electric racket. Wow, that is really weird. 